Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Before I start this message, Father God, I pray that everyone that tunes into this message that's been under a demonic attack, that they would be free in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, that as people hear this word, that it transforms their life and sparks a fire under their feet to move in the ways of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 32. 1 Corinthians 15, 32. And I am excited about this message today in the Lord. I didn't even know I was going to be preaching it today, but I feel like there's a heaviness in the atmosphere that needs to break in the mighty, precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So if you're under a demonic attack, I want to encourage you that the Lord is with you and this thing has a time limit. It cannot last. It cannot remain in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So I want to re- titled the message today. I know originally what I had put down, but I was praying and the more I got into the message today, the Lord instructed me to change the title to the belly of the beast, the belly of the beast. It's like some of you are watching me right now and you feel like you've been thrown into hell itself. You're in the belly of hell. You're in the belly of the beast. Jonah cried out from the belly of hell while his body was in the well. Let me tell you something. He was convinced he was never getting out of the place he was at because he had disobeyed God. But some of you, my friend, let me explain to you right now. You may be in a belly of hell situation, but the Lord shall deliver you. As he delivered Jonah, he's going to deliver you. As he delivered Harabashenda, as he delivered Daniel from the lion's den, he's going to deliver you. As he delivered Meshach, Radshach, and Abednego from the fiery furnace. He's going to deliver you. Are you hearing what I'm preaching this morning? Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I sure will. I pray for you and ask the Lord to tell me what he wants to say. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Anna, God bless you. Rufus, God bless you, brother. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 32. 1 Corinthians 15. Actually, let's go to verse 31 first. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. If after this manner of men, I have fought with the beast at Ephesus, what advantage it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. This is going to become very important in just a moment. But I want to focus primarily on the beast of Ephesus. What is he talking about? He's not talking about wildlife. He ain't talking about leopards and lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. He's talking about principalities and powers. He said, I fought against men like the beast of Ephesus. He's talking about, I'm getting a lot of smack from people. I'm getting a lot of 
trash talk from people that I thought would listen to me. I, I, I'm getting a lot of backlash for some reason. And he said, no other, he, he said, really what it is, he said is it's the beast of Ephesus. The Lord's going to fight the belly of the beast for you, my friend. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Bible says that in the time of David that there was an enemy and the and David didn't know which way the enemy went. But God allowed one of the members of the camp to get a bellyache of the enemy's camp and the enemy left that man there and David found him with his bellyache and he told him which way the enemy went. So literally, God allowed the belly of the beast to get a bellyache. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. It was one of the toughest times in David's life for the people talked of stoning David. They thought about killing him to get him off the throne. They didn't want him there no more. They thought he was a bad king. So because they they couldn't forgive him, though God in heaven had forgiven him, they could not forgive him because they were playing God. And there was a lot of people around him that had lost their faith in his kingship. But let me tell you something. God allowed the belly of the beast to get a bellyache. God allowed the enemy to get a bellyache so David could reclaim the throne, that he could get the victory over his enemy and show them I still have the authority that I told you I have. I am a child of the king. Let me show you what the Lord has done. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sometimes you just got to let God give your enemy a bellyache. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. He was fighting spirits, but not just any spirits. These were regional demons. These were territorial demons. It was actually the city of Ephesus was named, they believed two things about it. One thing is they believed that a king named Ephesus moved, somebody named Ephesus moved there and named the city. But another part of legend, which in that area, Greek mythology, Greek languages, there a lot of their legends were really realities. But really, it was the reality of demons in their area. Now, I want to show you something. The people of Ephesus, their name, check this out, y'all, came from the Amazon women that had invaded that land. That's what the true story is. The Amazon women invaded the land and their queen, Ephesa, actually established that region. So you have a woman ruling over a man. Are you tracking with me already? Thank you, Holy Ghost. You have a woman ruling over a man. The Bible says that a woman's not to assert authority over the man. You have this woman ruling over the men of the city of Ephesus, and it's releasing a regional demon. But you know what? She's hiding under the name Ephesa. Ephesa is another Jezebel. That's all she really is. She's controlling, she's authoritative, and she's becoming eviler and eviler in the time of Ephesus. Now, she dies, uh, and the people of Ephesus go on. But the spirit in that woman was released when she died. There was a regional devil released in that area. Are you hearing me? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But he said in Ephesus, oh, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. He said in Ephesus, Ephesians 6 and 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this present world. Are you tracking with me? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He was saying, I'm fighting demons. But now, 
Let's go back what he said. Now, the name Ephesa actually means desirable one. She was very desirable. This Amazon queen, this warrior woman was very attractive uh, according to the word here and according to her name. It, it means desirable one. But let me explain something to you. The devil looks appealing till he bites you. That fruit, whatever it was that, that Eve ate from, looked appealing. Hallelujah. It looked appealing till she got bit by the spirit behind it. She got spiritually bit. By the Spirit behind it. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. But when you resist the kiss, mm, glory to God, she's desirable. Check this out, but the Lord gave this to me. But when you resist the kiss, the devil will hiss. That snake, that thing you think is a beautiful creature becomes an evil snake. It becomes a viper serpent and it will bite you. But the love of Jesus is the antidote to your trouble. Amen. Praise the Lord and the blood. The love and the blood of Jesus Christ is the antidote to your trouble. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Amen. But when you resist the kiss, the devil will hiss. The spirit of the ghetto Gadareans ran Jesus out of their region. Because when Jesus came and told the, the demons to go into the pigs and the pigs ran off the cliff, everybody in that region lost their job. It was the first stock market crash of the Bible days, my friend. Thank you, Lord Jesus. They weren't afraid of Jesus. They was afraid of all the business that they had just lost. So the regional devils of the ghetto Gadareans ran Jesus out of that region. They said they didn't want him there. It was a spirit over the Gadareans. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. But interestingly enough, in verse 32, if after the manner of men I have fought with a beast at Ephesus, with beast at Ephesus, who advantageth it me? If the dead rise not, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. He was, Paul was actually taking the phrase out of a Greek scholar's mouth. He was using an, an actual line quoted from a Greek philosopher. Let us eat and drink and be merry for tomorrow we die. That's a Greek philosopher. And Paul did this several times to the Greek people that he preached to. Why did he use the language, the lingo of Greek philosophers? Because he was trying to win them to Christ. He would talk like them. He would look kind of like them to win them to the cross. Are you tracking with me? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. He, he knew that in his preaching, he had to throw something in there that they knew, hey, this guy knows what he's talking about. He ain't just preaching. He ain't just talking he, he knows our region. He knows what we're looking for. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. He did it several times in the Bible. He was talking their language to win their love to Jesus. He was trying to win them to Jesus. But he was fighting spirit. So was David when David saw the crucifixion of Christ over a thousand years before it actually happened. Psalms 22 and 12, he said, bulls of Bashan and strong bulls of Bashan. He said, many bulls, bulls of Bashan 
surround me. Strong bulls of Bashan. Now wait a minute. Where's the bulls in the book? Where, where's the bulls in the crucifixion story? We don't read about bulls in the crucifixion story. That's because these bulls of Bashan were demon spirits that was at the cross. They were there at the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And David Solomon, he described them as bulls. But do you know it's interesting that John the baptizer was baptizing at the region of Bashan. <laughs> Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Dobby, God bless you, brother. Doby, God bless you. I'm sorry about that. God bless you, brother Doby. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yes, he saw them demon spirits even before the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalms 22 and 12, he said, the strong bulls of Bashan surround me. Strong bulls, these are strong spirits. These are regional devils that came to the crucifixion of Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now check this out, y'all. These regional devils, were there. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I sure will do a message on that soon, brother. Me and you together. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Did you know that hell is referred to as a beast? It's referred to as a living creature. Did you know that? Brother Richard, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It's referred to as a living creature. Isaiah 5, 14. It said, The jaws of hell openeth up her mouth, her mouth, to receive the wicked. Wait a minute. Another book that's actually one of the missing books of the Bible that gives similar name to Isaiah, Esric 51.7, talks about the bowels of hell, the jaws of hell, the bowels of hell. It's referring as if hell itself is a beast. Esric 51.7 is actually a missing book of the Bible. Now check this out, y'all. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It, it refers to it as a beast. I ain't getting into all the missing books of the Bible and all that stuff with you. I just wanted to give you that little bit of a... a, a uh, that little bit of a, a revelation there. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It's referred to as a beast. There is a demon in Job that God asks, who can take a hook and put it in Leviathan's jaw? Amen. Hell is alive, that's right. Hell is alive. It's a real place. And it actually enlarges daily its jaws. It opens wide its jaws daily to receive the souls of the damned. Now check this out, y'all. Job 41.1. God asked Job, who can put a hook in Leviathan's jaw and draw him out. Leviathan, the spirit of Leviathan. Mm, come on, brother. It Hell is alive, but it inhabits dead things. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You're right, brother. Preach on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I love 
Brother Dobby, he's my brother Doby. He's my shouting brother. I love Doby. He's my buddy. I love him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. But Job was asked, he said, who can put a hook in Leviathan's jaw and drag him out? Leviathan is another name for Satan and Leviathan is running loose in the church today. The spirit of Leviathan is running loose in the church today. I want to go somewhere with this now. Keep tracking with me, okay? Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. God alone, God alone will punish Leviathan. Isaiah 27, 1, God said he's going to take his sword, his mighty sword, and punish Leviathan. So if you're under a demonic attack of Leviathan right now in the church, if it feels like the wind's being cut out of your gut, if it feels like you can't hardly breathe in the spirit, you're under an attack of Leviathan. You're under an attack of the demon of Ephesus. You're under an attack right now. But let me explain something to you. That attack won't last, amen? It's got a cut off point. You're getting free right now in the name of Jesus from that spirit of offense, from that spirit that's trying to shut your mouth like the demon of Ephesus did. Paul, he was trying to get him to shut up because it wanted that region to stay bound. And Paul came by the name of Jesus Christ to set it free. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I feel your glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Job 41, 1, God asked, who can bind up Leviathan with a hook? Now, I tell you what, when I prayed for those that were demon-possessed and Jesus set them free, when I rebuked the spirit of Leviathan, I've seen it time and time again. I didn't understand it at first until I read that scripture. I've seen it time and time again. When you rebuke the spirit of Leviathan, you will watch in the name of Jesus their jaw twist. It contorts because God is drawing out. Hallelujah. God is drawing out Leviathan. God is pulling that creature out of that spirit, out of that person. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. God will punish Leviathan, Isaiah 27 and 1. Again, the Lord alone is the only one that will punish the devil. Revelation 21 through 3. If you got your Bibles, turn with me. <laughs> I'm rhyming a little bit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Amen. If you can't have fun in God, you're already dead, my friends. You got to have fun in God. We're alive in Him because He lives in us. Oh, wow. A brother Rufus said he's seen it because a, 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 one of his nurses had that spirit. Wow, amen. Thank you, Jesus. I pray she got deliverance in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Revelation 21 through 3. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on that dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Wait a minute. He laid hold of the great dragon, the serpent, the devil, and Satan. That, that's the same dude. But he came in four different entities. And the angel of the Lord took a great chain and bound him up. We get confused with the word angel a lot. Now, the word angel means angelos or messenger. Okay? Check this out, y'all. The messenger of God, the Lord himself, took a chain and bound Leviathan, okay? He bound the dragon, okay? Check this out, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, amen. 
it said the angel having the key to the bottomless pit. Well, who has the key to the bottomless pit? The one who owns the keys to all the kingdom of the world. Thank you, Jesus. Revelation 118 said, Jesus said, behold, I am alive and alive forevermore. He said, for I hold the keys to death and hell. He has the key. Hallelujah. He ain't giving it to nobody else. And he's going to come lock that devil up. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Somebody better give God the glory on that. Somebody better shout, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. A king once became a beast in the Bible. Daniel chapter 5, verses 20 through 30, this king thought he was better than God. He thought he was a, a, a mightier king than God. And the Bible said, while the words were still fresh on his lips, he didn't even get it out of his mouth yet. God punished him so he wouldn't blaspheme the word. He wouldn't. He he would later actually become a believer in the Lord and and follow the Lord to his death. But he he God shut his mouth, and the Bible said he went out into the fields for seven years, a wild man. The Bible said his body grew hair all over it, and his fingernails became his claws. And the Bible said that he ate with the wild animals. And the Bible said that the wild animals did not mess with him because he was under the judgment of God. Wait, wait a minute. Even the wild animals knew this guy's an idiot. He, he doesn't mess with God. <laughs> and God's punishing him. We ain't going to touch this guy because if we eat him, we might get the stupid that was in him rub off on us, you know, like but they didn't want to mess with this guy. I'm just being funny there. But, you know, I can imagine these wild animals, the lepers and tigers and bears looking at him like, oh, this guy's under the judgment of the one that spoke us into existence. Uh, we ain't going to mess with him. We're going to leave him be. Obviously, God's going to punish him. We ain't going to have to. So we're going to leave him alone. And the Bible said that they left him alone. The wild beast didn't mess with him because they saw he was under the judgment of Almighty God. Or now mercy. When the animals are smarter than us, we got a problem. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. But after a time, he... The Bible said, as he gave glory to God, he repented and his mind came back to him. He gave glory to God and said, God is the only one to be worshipped. God is the only one to be exalted. And God restored his kingdom to him. God is so good. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Amen. But one day, Here's where I'm getting into the end time preaching part. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. One day, the spiritual will manifest in the physical. See, and every man that is left behind will be thrown into the belly of the beast. They'll be thrown into a time of great travail, a time of great birth, and a time of great torment at the same time. Now listen to me, y'all. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. They'll be thrown into the belly of the beast. And he'll require everyone that worships him to receive a mark. Revelation, 3, uh, Revelation 13, 16 through 18. Those that do will suffer for it. Revelation 16 and 2. But the spirit that will be made physical will have his burning day. He will have his day in God's courts where he is judged. Revelation 20 
and 10. And all those that accepted his mark, check this out, y'all. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. And all who follow him. But see, in Genesis 3.14, he's the serpent. In Revelation 12, 9, he's the dragon. How did he go from being the serpent to the dragon? Somebody's been feeding him. And a lot of people keep feeding the devil with the sin they're in. They keep feeding the devil off the dust of their worldly desires. Let me tell you something, though. He has eggs in the spirit world. Do you know? And they hatch in your mind. Isaiah 59, 1 through 8. Those spiritual eggs hatch in your mind. But God wants to take you to the belly of the beast. And He wants you to come out unscathed. Isaiah 43 and 2. You've been through the fire, you've been through the flood. Some through the mud, but all through the blood. Let me tell you something, my friend. You've been going through the fire. You've been going through the flood, but let me tell you something. Jesus Christ is alive. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you'll pray this with me, I'll pray that God will deliver you and save you and free you from the attack of the evil one in the name of Jesus. Pray this, Lord Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross, that God the Father raised you from the dead, and I am saved. Lord Jesus, give me your spirit. Give me your power over the powers of the enemy. And in Jesus' name, I cancel the assignment of the devil. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. Wash me and cleanse me. Fill me with your precious spirit that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. It's always the hour for revival. I am your brother in the Lord. Brother H.R. and it's always the hour for revival. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.